Hey there, and welcome back. This is Barn Sprite number three. I have a lot of work to do to get this car back on the road, so let's get straight into it. I got this big box of parts from Moss Motors. Let's see if we can get all these on and we'll be well on our way to getting this car back on the road. First item is going to be a new emblem for the bonnet. It is keyed. That just slips on like that. It's pretty secure as it is, but there are clips that you put on the back side and that holds it so it won't pop off. Next thing I want to fix is it is missing the passenger side parking light and turn signal. I did order the entire assembly, so this should be everything I need. Well, that's interesting. Didn't expect it to be packaged like that. Give me a second to open this. Okay, this looks great. I will have to take this apart. Need to pop this glass off. Because first this is going to be put on. And then the wires need to be pushed through this rubber grommet and hooked up to the socket and the socket is what holds all this on. After this is screwed to the car, the bezel holds the glass and this grommet, and that's what holds these two pieces on. Normally the wire harness would have bullet connectors that you could stick through here and then connect up to this, but those have been cut off of the wiring, so I'll need to make some new wires with the bullet connectors that connect onto these three positions and then stick them through there and then I'll connect them to the wire harness where they're broken on the other side. I've attached three wires to it. Now I just need to feed the other ends through the grommet. And there we go. The new light is in place. I will fix the wiring once I get the key for the ignition and move on to making sure the electrical work. Let's dive under the bonnet and start fixing things in there. I have a bunch of things that I need to install in here before I can run the engine for a long period of time. I've got new hoses, I have a belt because there is no belt hooked up right now, but there's an even bigger problem. If we look in here, I try to wiggle the radiator fan, it doesn't move at all. And there's no belt on the water pump, so that means the water pump is completely seized up. I could probably change the water pump without removing the radiator, but because I have all of these other things that I also need to do, I think it's easier just to take the four bolts that hold the radiator in, disconnect the hoses that need to get disconnected anyways, take that out, and then I can get to the water pump really easy. On an early Sprite, the hardest part about removing the radiator is getting this bung for the water temperature out. On later Sprites, this is actually plugged into the head and not into the radiator so you don't have that problem. But this is very rusty. I'm gonna put some penetrating fluid on this first and hopefully I don't break this. Normally for something that is stuck like this, you could use some heat, but this is actually a sealed tube and if you were to use some heat on this, the bulb on the end is going to explode. So you can't really use any heat to get these out. Yep, yeah, that's stuck in there really good. So I'll let that sit for a while see if that'll free up at all. If I have to, I might just have to unbolt the radiator and see if I can hold it out of the way with this still attached and move it out of the way enough that I can get to everything. This fan is made of three pieces. So very simple, cheap to make. Looks like the ear on the generator is broken. Mm -hmm. 
Look at the solid crud in here, seizing this water pump up. And the top of the block here is just filled with crud as well. So I'll need to get that cleaned up. This water pump still might be good if I can get all this stuff out of it, but I also have a brand new water pump. Just for fun, let's run this in the parts washer and see what happens. All right, I've got it cleaned up and it does rotate now, but you can see big sections of the impeller are actually completely rusted away and gone. This should be circular all the way along the top and a bunch of the edge of the impeller is actually completely rusted away. So this water pump is definitely toast. I have everything cleaned up and sucked out of there the best I can. Now I can install the new water pump. Here's a new water pump. I am using a little bit of blue RTV to hold the gasket on. I don't want this to leak. So if I put a little bit, just a real thin bead along the side of it, it's not going to leak. There we go, doesn't take a whole lot. There are two dowels that need to be lined up with the holes. There we go. There are two bolts that are longer than the others. They go in these two locations. I did buy one of these squeezable bypass hoses because if I didn't buy this, I would not be able to squeeze it on there without putting the hose on before I mounted the water pump up. But since I have one of these hoses, I can put it on after the water pump is on. And there we go, new bypass hose. All right, belt is installed. Let's take a look under here. I have a new thermostat I'm going to use. I am using a 180 degree. That's good for the climate that I'm in. I think they also come in 160 and 170. And on the housing, I'm going to use a little bit of the blue RTV here as well. It doesn't need to be thick. You just need a consistent line with no breaks going around it. Last thing is the two new radiator hoses. This top hose up here is really easy to put on at any point. This bottom one is kind of a trick because it has to go underneath this cross member and then connect up here, connect up right here on the radiator. So I like to stick it underneath the cross member, connect it up to the radiator first, and then mount the radiator in. And then it's pretty easy to get to this connection here to connect this up. And of course this pipe connects to that there. It's a real pain to replace this hose if you're not removing the radiator, but if you have the radiator removed, just connect this here before you completely bolt the radiator up and you'll have a lot easier time at it. Radiator is back in, all the new hoses are on. I still need to replace the hoses that go to the heater core. A standard straight hose can be used here, but on this side, I have used straight hoses before. It never works out that well, so I am going to order the correct curved hose that goes between the valve and the heater core. 
that's going to be it for today. Soon my new key so that I can turn the ignition on should show up. So if you want to see more videos on this car, comment below and let me know.